What's up everybody, it's Sparrow with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Engineers Inspiration series. We are starting things off today with the Silverback Humvee and a uh, trailer, drone trailer, I think is the actual name, I don't know. Um, so this was actually a pretty interesting one in that uh, I don't normally do a lot of small fighters and things because I've said before there's not a, a whole lot for me to run through. This one has like the opposite. There's probably so many different bells and whistles to go through. I probably won't get them all. Um, I do encourage you to download it and check it out for yourself though. It's a fairly low impact blueprint. Um, so you should be able to do it with most any kind of uh, rig. There's no mods to it or anything like that. It is designed for planets and atmospheres. So you have the atmospheric thrusters on the drone and all that kind of stuff, but it's essentially a Humvee with a trailer that carries a drone, and then it also has a, um, a turret type thing. And this freaked me out at first. I thought this was a uh, some kind of artifact thing that just pasted in with the the um, the blueprint, and then when it fell, it like got stuck. But it's actually, I think it's a projector crosshair actually, which is a really neat idea. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of stuff, though, that, um, I don't know if I'm gonna end up catching all this. I tried to read through all the description, which it's very thorough, um, but in the interest of time and stuff, I really just didn't have time to commit it all to memory and stuff, so I'm either gonna mess things up or ignore them entirely. I'm not sure. That's why I recommend you guys doing it yourself as well. Um, so internally, first of all, I love this. We've seen a lot of um, pilotable driving ships and stuff like that, but there really is never any steering wheel because you always just kind of drive it yourself or are accessed through a flight seat or something like that. Um, so we have computers here. Now this is interesting because it is a modless thing. Hold on a minute. I just realized something. This is a modless build. So what is this block? Because this block... Oh, they must have changed the small ship grid for programmable blocks, because that's not how they used to look. Hmm. Fascinating. Very fascinating. I knew this not. Okay. So our first step is not that. Um, to take control of the driver and gunner seat. And there's a bunch of these things, like the, the rotor uh, reattach, the blinkers, control panel. There's a lot of different adjustments you can make. It's very, very configurable from what I've seen. Uh-oh. Can't get my third-person view, though. That kind of sucks. All right, whatever. Um, so, yeah, now we're in control. Or we should be. Oh, everything's safety locked, I think. So we have the rotors for the turrets and the rotor for the trailer on safety lock. So we're going to turn that off. And now I still can't seem to actually drive. Okay, that's the turret one. Hmm. Okay. Not entirely sure why I seem unable to move forward unless there's a parking brake. Uh, that's the blinker. That's the wheels, but I'm not really sure what those are for. That doesn't look like a safety lock engagement. Like I said, it's kind of one of those where there was a lot of information in the in the description type thing. Um. Let me see if I can access it from the other seat. That might be the gunner seat. Now that I think about it. Though it shouldn't matter because I actually remote accessed this. It says driver. Hmm. I kind of wish I could get outside the thing to see what was happening. I'm really confused at this point. Okay, so much like Sulu taking out the Enterprise out of space dock, I actually did, in fact, have the parking brake on. <laughs> so, yeah, what you have to do is you have to actually access the con the remote control panel. Ooh, we're going a little fast. Uh, once you actually access the remote control panel, then you're in control of the actual uh, 
Humvee, and then when you hit the P button or the landing gear lock, you'll actually turn the handbrake off. So I did actually have the handbrake on, so my bad. Um, but yeah, so it actually drives pretty good. I like it. I wasn't a, I wasn't really sure how the trailer and all that would hold up, uh, but it seems to be doing pretty good. Now with that, we are actually going to engage the parking brake yet again. And we'll turn the safety lock on the trailers on, but we'll disengage the, the safety locks on the turret. And then I think it's this one. Yes, yeah, so this gives you access to the turret camera, um, which is really cool. It gives you rotor turret elevation. Um, it looks like ammo count. And I like this projector crosshair thing. That's really cool. Now, why I can't fire, I guess I'm out of ammo, but... Um, I really do like this, uh, this little imp uh, imp uh, impromptu or, or creative crosshair thing. That's a really nice touch. I really like that. That's pretty cool. I think if I was going to change one thing, it would be for that to be off by default. And then when you accessed control or something, then you could turn on your crosshair kind of thing. But that's really a minor thing. It's not really a big deal. But I really like the crosshair aspect it gives you a very good idea of where you're where you're pointing and stuff so that's pretty cool now as for uh the other aspect of can i get my there we go nope i really don't like the camera in the, the third person camera in this game for vehicle control still needs a lot of work okay um so the next thing we can do um, let's play around with a couple of different things here, actually. So there's a couple of different buttons we can mess with. I'm assuming this is the rotor hitch. Uh, but we can raise and lower this, and I'm assuming this is the pistons that do that? No? Okay. Um, hitch attach, piston lower. Let's do that. So that puts it on, that's basically like, uh pedestal type thing. It locks it in place. I'm really not sure what that does, actually. I'm probably doing something I'm not supposed to, but I'm not really sure what that does. Um, so then if we... Oh, it's possible... Hold on. We probably need to, to detach this. Uh, safety lock, reverse... Oh. Can you not do it while safety locked? Is that what you're is that what you're telling me? Let's try it. So let's turn safety lock off and now you can detach. Okay, so now the vehicle has detached though I thought I had the parking brake on. I don't really know why you're sliding. That's kind of weird. It has handbrake on. Let's just turn the Nope, that's not doing anything either. Okay. So, no real idea why that happened, but whatever. You could eventually just drive the vehicle back over here and have it hooked back up. Um, so I'm assuming this is then the uh, drone controller, I imagine. Uh, there, here we go. Oh, this is a programmable block. This isn't... Nope, a sign programmable block. Oh, this must be the beacon. All right, remote control, there we go. So let's control that. Okay, so this is the... Oh, wait, where did it go? Hold up. Uh, drone, remote, where are you? There you are. Control, okay. So we have gyroscopes, thrusters, antennas, all of these are off. That toggles the block on and off. I'm looking for a connector or a um, detach button. So let's turn the gyroscopes and the thrusters off. Okay, we'll turn that stuff off, I guess. Um, I need a detachment. Where's the merge blocks for this thing? Merge. Merge block. No, that's tra well, that's trailer. No, I really want the one for the drone. There should be one for the drone somewhere. But I don't see it. I could just turn it off. 
maybe? And then... Now I don't have control. Okay, I messed something up. I really don't understand how this works. There was a lot of stuff set up with the l these, like, laser antenna things and stuff, and I do not really understand them. Oh, there we go. Okay, hold up. So, merge block. Turn that back on. They should snap. Now I turn that off, and we should be okay. In theory. Let's find out. But see, once I turn that off, then I have no access to the trailer, or the drone thing. I'm confused. There seems to... I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. This is why I said I would download it yourself, because a lot of people probably have a much easier time doing this type of thing, but I can never get this stuff to work right for me. Um, I'm doing the control things, and I'm probably just not doing it correctly. Um, but I need... Is it because the antenna's off? That could be part of it. It's supposed to be done through, like, laser antennas, though. And I've never, I've never worked with those. I have no idea how these laser things work. Never. Never messed with them. Never played around with them at all. So, I have no clue what the proper procedure for them is. But all I know is every time I detach it, I keep losing this. Maybe I just have to do this way. I don't think it's the right way to do it. Um... Okay, go away. Yeah, this is totally not the way you're supposed to do it, by the way. But, we did it. So now we can turn these and these on, and we should be able to fly around. Why I can't see where I am, though, I don't know. Because I'm in control of this. So it keeps snapping me to where I am, which is silly. And that's flying over there. Anyways, so ignore my bumbling idiocy because the the ship itself is actually a really cool ship. I just can't pilot this crap for anything. Is really what's going on here. Woo. That's that's really the key here is that I just am a very crappy player when it comes to all the customized stuff and how you're how you really do all this stuff. Actually, the drone flies really really nice though once you get once you get used to it, or once you actually get a hold of it, rather. Um, why it's not slowing down, I don't really know. Like, if it has a forward, I imagine it has a reverse. So And side to side. Does it not have... Oh, it doesn't have lateral thrusters. That's why. I was like, why is this not like slowing down? It's because it doesn't have any laterals, it doesn't look like. So it can't, uh, get rid of the inertia, it looks like. Anyways. So yeah, overall, I really like the combo. It's really neat to have, like, a truck and a, and a drone set up type of thing. I just did not read the instruction manual correctly, apparently. And I take, I, I, I mean that, like, I kind of skimmed through it and did not actually <laughs> read all of it all the way through. But anyways, I think that's going to do it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. Alrighty, so next up we have the HMS Oddity, which, according to the description, I believe was inspired by a Star Citizen, Star Citizen, a Star Citizen ship, uh, a Star Citizen ship, which I believe was the Karak, Karak. I'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce it, but that was the ship in question. Um, and I thought it was a pretty cool ship design as well. Uh, particularly, I really like the front part here. Um, which I'm assuming is the bridge. But you all know me, I love stuff with like an open cockpit glass type look, so um, I really do like the bridge looking design there. But the, the ship in and of itself is a pretty cool design as well. Uh, down here it looks like we have a hangar. Would be my estimate. Oh, and it's got a nice little walkway as well, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I kind of want to see... We'll start over here. 
let's see where the... Okay, went a little farther. Uh, we'll see where this walkway takes us out here, because I'm curious as to why this is out and about. Uh, we do have gravity. It doesn't really seem like it goes anywhere particular, other than the fact that you can actually walk on the outside of the ship. Uh, so, change of plans. We actually will go through this way and see where this takes us. I'm assuming that when we get in here, there will be a part that goes up and over and leads us into... into that area. Okay, so this is gonna lead to the bridge, I'm assuming. So this leads to Cryo and Medbay over here. And I'm assuming the same thing. Yep, same thing on this side. They're all connected through a conveyor system. That's your hangar area. And I don't believe... Yeah, I don't have my, my uh, headlamps on at all here. And unfortunately, that flickering glitch is still in full effect, so we have jump drives here. I do like the effect of these pillars in in hallways and stuff, as well as we talked before, the, uh, the two-tone colors to create the ridge in the metal, I think, is another nice touch. So, now we get into the what looks like the production area, with the refinery and... Another refinery. I don't see any assemblers. They've got to be around here somewhere. Uh, this looks like some kind of small fighter bay, because there's a there's hangars here, and there's a couple of landing pads there. So I'm assuming it's like a fighter bay. Ooh, this is kind of cool and unexpected. Interesting. So we have a cargo bay type thing here. It's all connected up. Uh, I don't know where this goes. Ah, okay, so this is the lower area of the hangar where we've got a couple connectors there to the main hangar doors. I, again, I like this. Uh, this isn't actually using different blocks, just color palettes to make walkways and borders and things. I think that's a really nice touch. Um, that gives a much more... Mm, how do I put this? I think that gives a much more detailed and powerful effect for it to really not be anything all that difficult other than recoloring some of the blocks. For it to just be still a steel plate floor, but you can dress it up a little bit. Uh, this is clearly the indoctrination area. <laughs> that's, that's actually really funny. I like that. That's pretty funny. Uh... I mean, it's, it's, that is clearly a brainwashing center right there. That's what that is. Um, reconditioning facility, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I find it interesting that that pathway only goes down on one side, though. It doesn't end up having a, a symmetrical walkway. That's an interesting design choice. And this leads us to... We have a gravity generator over there, a couple of doors. Let's see what these side doors lead to. So this must be a... Uh, I'm assuming this is an unpressurized area. Uh, the conveyor system, probably maintenance area, would be my assumption if something goes wrong with the conveyor network. Would be my, my guess. I like this kind of stuff too. We've talked about these kind of use, using the angle blocks decoratively like that I think is a nice touch. This is actually a very well-lit ship, from what I can tell. <laughs> that was perfect. That was per This is well-lit. Doink. No, no more lights. Uh, <clears throat> when the game engine is working correctly and the lights aren't turning themselves off all the time, this is actually a fairly effective lighting system. Uh, this is, looks like the power reactor area. I'm assuming it goes the same way on this side. Yes. Now, I didn't actually see a door with this little pathway. I would have expected there to be, like, some kind of doorway for, um, 
maintenance or something, but I'm not seeing it. So that's interesting. But... Yeah, like, most ships are actually very scarce on the lighting, and so they end up being very dim, and I end up having to use my headlamps and stuff, but this one's actually pretty good as far as when the, the game engine is not flickering out and stuff like that, but the overall lighting is pretty bright. I think it works pretty well. Uh, so we have found the assemblers and oxygen generators and all that stuff, it looks like. Uh, I take that back. Are all of these oxygen generators... That's oxygen. This looks like an oxygen generator as well. Yeah. So, not assemblers? Are there any assemblers on this ship? I haven't seen any. Interesting. Now, that's an interesting way to do a pillar as well. That's kind of cool. In fact, what kind of... Half slopes. Oh, I haven't... I thought they looked different. The texture I didn't recognize. They're using half slopes here. That's a very new block that I am not used to seeing at all yet. So I did not see that coming. Oh, and we have an outdoor section here as well. Where you can actually walk along the top. That's kind of cool. Looks like we have some spotlights here. I'm assuming these colored areas are going to be a path. And then that leads us back to the walkway area. Interesting. Very interesting. That's a visual window. Okay. Very, very cool. Very cool. Uh, let's head back up this way again. And now let's go check out the bridge. Except for this area. This is the only area that's a little dim. That may have been on purpose. I have to think that's on purpose because the rest of the ship is so well lit up. It's probably got like an like a reason for that. Uh, we got programmable blocks, timer blocks, stuff like that. Very very cool bridge. I like this area a lot. It's got like its own. This almost reminds me. The nose part almost reminds me a bit from the outside of like the Normandy or something from Mass Effect. Not that they had a big glass. Um, opening or anything. It just, it looks fairly similar in design and stuff, but... Okay, so we have hangar controls, all doors, and then landing gears, it looks like. It doesn't look like, other than turrets and stuff, that it has, like, any armament, really. So I'm not sure I would classify it as, like, a assault carrier or anything like that. Um, speed-wise, not too shabby. The turning I'm actually surprised about. The turning actually is, is really responsive. Um, speed and acceleration is pretty good for the size of the ship overall. So overall, I really like it. I like the exterior design and stuff, too. I think I'm more sold on the exterior design um, than some of the interior stuff. But it's all, it's all very... Um, functional and everything. Everything works. And it is set up for survival ready, I believe, according to the description. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for this one. Let's move on to the last one. Alright, and lastly, we have a bit of a different one. This is the LTV C1 Buffalo, I believe, if I got it right. Um, this is a freighter, like a space hauler type of thing. Um, so it's essentially a big space cargo shipper type of vessel. Um, it is important to note it is survival ready and such. It also is compatible with thruster damage and there was something else that I forget what it was for, but it also mentions at the end of the description um, that it was designed it, it to fly around in space. It can land on moons if it's unloaded, so you could use it as a way to offload stuff from a moon base, but not to bring shipments to. I'm assuming because the gravity is too much for the, the thrusters and it can't handle it when it's loaded. Um, overall, this is one of those, like we've talked many times before, about the uh, intentional busyness kind of thing. It makes it look very industrial, and I think they get, I think they got that part really well down, down pat. I think this looks good, especially for a, a modless where you don't have a lot of bits and bobs material mod 
blocks and things that you can use to kind of clutter up the build. Okay, so let's get in here and get cracking. Now, I will say this. At first, given the size of the ship, I was expecting a fairly decent interior, but after just jumping in here, I realized a lot of the ship's bulk is external components. It's a lot of cargo containers, it's a lot of um, refineries and stuff like that, so I don't actually know, now that I'm thinking about it, how much of an interior you're really going to end up with, so this will be interesting. We do have a cryopod here. Um, and it looks like a couple of bunks, so it's at least a five-person crew, because there's four bunks here in a cryo chamber. Um, I guess that might be a shower? Might be what that's supposed to be, because that clearly is not a door. Because it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, we have an access point here to the cargo container, where we've got stuff. Stuff and things. This does feel like a bit more of a realistic kind of uh, International Space Station type design in terms of no fuss, no muss. It's a lot of just, this is the way that it works. Now this is an interesting idea as well. They did an incomplete door frame to make kind of a hallway tunnel. I like that touch. That's kind of cool. And then this should be a gravity generator. Yep. So here's the gravity. This is a... Um, unsealed, exposed to space area, and this is all the cargo containers. So yeah, there's really not a whole lot of interior. I was actually expecting a bit more interior from the thumbnail, but once I actually started looking at what the ship was, uh, got me kind of thinking, maybe there's really not that much internally to, to investigate. Which ended up being true. Overall, though, for a hauler, for what it is designed to do, I do like the, uh... Ooh, we got spotlights. I always like spotlights. Uh, we also have hydrogen and ion thrusters, no atmo thrusters, and a camera. We can close the doors. Okay, so that's the main front camera. Um, speed... Whoa, wow. Okay. So speed and turning wise, now granted this is not loaded I don't think, so there's that, but yeah, it actually moves a lot better than I expected it to. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't see any armaments on it actually, in fact I don't even really see any turrets. So definitely not a ship you would want to take in hostile territory by the looks of things. I do see oxygen generators, I do not see solar. So. It is probably primarily powered by reactors and uranium, if I had to guess. Uh, but yeah, movement I'm very surprised with. It it moves really well, and speed is crazy fast for, for a hauling type ship like this. Though again, I don't know how much of that is because it's um, unloaded. That could very well have a lot to do with it, and when you fill up all these cargo containers, it might move a lot slower. I do not know. Uh, but on that note, I think we're going to wrap things up here for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace!